In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the top five skills that Kai Soto has that could translate quite well into the NBA because he just declared for the NBA draft. Now let's get down and let's check out Kai Soto. So being a young player in the NBA, there is one thing that will get you a ton of court time and that is being able to find open players and pass them the ball, be able to have the accuracy and the court vision to be able to do so. What he was able to do here after getting that offensive rebound was spin off of one player who tried to reach in to steal that ball. When he spun off, he could have went up for this shot, but that defender was going out to protect nobody. And this guy's defender came over to play help defense on Kai Soto. Because of that, Kai Soto could have easily went up, but of course he's able to get it to his man because his man was able to seal that defender so that he had literally an open basket. What's a better decision? Fighting over top of a center to score or passing to a wide open shot? Obviously passing to a wide open shot is going to give you an assist and a basket. With the NBA really trying to stretch five out style offenses, this is something that you're going to probably see a lot as well and that is backdoor cuts. Especially if Kai Soto gets onto a team, let's say for the for an example, the Toronto Raptors, and they have players like Scotty Barnes or Pascal Siakam or somebody who's a wing in this corner who's being overplayed because nobody's really worried about a rookie who is seven foot three out on the perimeter. And because of that, they could play backdoor basketball quite easily with Kai Soto's ability to pass and to be able to weave those passes through defenders. Now Kai Soto is a three-point threat and he's also very good at being able to handle that ball and drive too. Here he's able to drive past his player to actually pick up a help side defender. And because he was able to pick up that help side defender he could have easily just went up for that shot easily. But again what's easier fighting over top of two pl players or passing to somebody who is absolutely wide open for that layup. There's one thing that is really heavily used in the NBA and that is the screen and roll and that's what we see Kai Soto using here. He, as the screen man he's able to attack the rim hard and get some massive dunks. That's actually one of his most recent games. And he's doing exactly what I was mentioning before, and that is rim running hard. You don't want to be walking to the rim. You don't want to be taking small steps, nice long strides, and get to that rim and, of course, slam it if you can. But he's not just a power player. He's able to set that screen, and he's able to use footwork as well as shooting touch around the rim so that he can get those floaters as well. I don't think there's too many players who will be able to block a 7'3 guy like this. And the footwork that he uses, outside foot, to catch land on both so that he could use a pivot if needed, he could have, if this defender continued through, he could have went for the shot fake, got this defender into the air, and then slammed it down. There's a lot of options that you have when you land on two feet. So this is a fantastic move either way, and a fantastic touch, by the way. He shoots both right and left-handed. After this screen and roll, we can see that he does start jogging slightly at the end but that's mainly because this offensive player was not attacking as hard as he should have to draw that hedge man earlier if he could have drawn that hedge man earlier this would have been a much easier dunk by kai soto but either way he still got the dunk obviously kai soto is a fantastic shooter especially here where he popped out somehow the clip messed up and i did not get his three-point shot but that was his first three-point shot he made in the NBL. However, it's not just about three-point shooting with Kai Soto. He can do these nice touch floaters or running jump shots in the mid-range area, which will be extremely useful for him because the NBA may not favor him right away. Being able to hit the three-point shot will also keep defenses honest. The reason why I'm saying this is because as a center, you need to be able to hit threes. If you're not hitting threes out here, your man is going to be protecting the paint. He's going to disallow you to drive because he's going to have a greater time to react to take that charge. And he's, by sitting here, disallowing you and really blocking a lot of the passing lanes. So to be able to hit a three-point shot is extremely useful and a especially at the NBA level, it will be definitely useful. He also has really great footwork. Here, it's just a quick jab and shot. You don't need to have crazy moves. Catch that ball, fantastic footwork, right foot pivot, jab left, get that guy on his heels, get that shot up. Nice high set point as well, which is going to be hard to block, very similar to a Dirk Nowinski. And 
of course, here he makes that shot. And he does tend to do this quite a lot. Jab, get the guy on his heels, and then go up for that shot. There's not many players who are going to be able to block that, and this guy's quite tall. Let's also not forget about defense. Here, he's able to get that block as a hedge man. And then as a help side defender, he's able to go over and, of course, get the block here as well, but mainly because he can time these shots. See, as a taller player, what you need to do, even as a shorter player, really, but if you're looking to come over to block a shot on the help side, watch this man right here. When he's attacking that rim, he gathers on his left, right, and he goes up with of course one step this would be stereotypical of a very good guard in the NBA you would want to go up with one step because you want to kind of set off the timing of that help side defender to block you well Kai Soto is able to notice this right at the last second and he's able to sky up still to get that block of course height does help but Timing does help too, and he's got the timing. And this is what I mean by timing. One, two, at that point he knows he's going up. Go up for that block. That's all you need to do. Time the steps. If you feel like he's going to go up a step early, then you can go up a step early as well. But generally speaking, players will take two steps on a layup or even a dunk, and you can get those blocks. Even here, he allows his man to get position on him, but he's able to use still that left arm to slightly disrupt that drive and, of course, still time it so that he gets that block. In the low post, Kai Soto is absolutely a beast. Here, one dribble into the middle, hop step, and then goes in for that baby hook. Again, you want to keep your dribbles to a minimum. And this is why I tell even my team the last practice to limit your dribbles in the low post. And the reason being is if Kai Soto was to take a second dribble here, this shorter defender would have been going in and digging and trying to get that ball. But because Kai Soto kept it to one dribble, did a jump stop, landing on both feet at the same time gives him the balance and power to go back into the his main defender and that's why he was able to make this shot and not get it stolen or miss being able to also score without taking any dribbles is very useful here he went up with his left hand he should have actually went up with more of his right hand and used his left hand to block that defender from trying to block him. That block did happen, but he was able to fight for that rebound still. He's tenacious, we have to remember that. And then he's able to take that dribble, shoulder into the chest of his defender, hop into him, and then that gets that defender back onto his heels so that Kai Soto would then posterize him. And this is what I mean, be strong, get your shoulder into their chest, hop into them. That gets them onto their heels. That is so important. That little small shoulder Shoulder, shoulder check right here, bang, into him is very important to be able to get up for those dunks. I hope that this video helps you become a better center in basketball and understand Kai Soto's game a bit more. If it has, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.